represented next week. I didn't realize uh, Brother Jefferson uh, was out. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have it uh, this week. Uh, once we have had uh, at least two or three parts, I'd like to leave the final part for a study so we can answer any questions uh, that pertain to the lesson taught and also that uh, we can get new information from a study standpoint and not just a uh, teaching standpoint where no one gets to reply. So we're going to encourage you to uh, reply, to put input, uh, ask, and both answer questions. So we're going to pick up uh, this Bible study, test your words to see if they are dead. Hebrews 9, verse 1 through 28 is the text that you can refer to for who's ever listening. Uh, and we'll go right into the study portion, which I have here where we'll pick up. Now, from a Bible study uh, standpoint, this is where we want to pick up. We have two different areas uh, that we want to deal with that we hope can be beneficial. And uh, one of the areas that we want to deal with is cares of this world. Now people today are trying to make everything spiritual. Uh, even from eating a piece of chicken. They should be thankful to the Lord and give thanks. That's spiritual. That's an individual that doesn't understand the word spirit deals with the invisible. Ethereal. It's something you cannot grab. You cannot see with your eyes. You cannot taste with your mouth. You cannot hear. You can hear with your ears the spirit. That's the thing Jesus said in John 3. You cannot grab it with your hands. And so we want to look at cares of this world and dealing with the same topic. Now, first, we're going to go to the book of Timothy to talk about getting entangled. And we want to look up... Uh, this particular word and we're gonna we're gonna nail some stuff to the cross today where it should be placed because uh, Timothy is told this but a lot of people want to make this for evangelists now nah, this is for everyone because we see the word soldier and all of us are soldiers there are no bench warmers in the Lord's army uh, we're all soldiers and so uh, the soldier has to be careful what he, what he will he or she will get uh, themselves entangled with, and so if you turn to the uh, second letter to Timothy, chapter number two, Second Timothy two, verse one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me. Among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach us also. So the works that Paul did and the works that he taught is what we're to teach. This is why we're getting to the, to the fine points of what we're to do. Verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man, now Timothy is not all men. Therefore, this applies to every saint. You say, why do you have to do all that much explaining those? And because I've heard saints try to make this whole letter, everything in it, apply only to Timothy or Evangelist, which is ridiculous. Poor study habits cause poor statements to be made. So it says right here uh, that uh, verse 4, No man that warreth, that's what we're in a war, so no soldier, no soldier on earth that's in a war, entangleth himself, with the affairs of this life. Now you know this this is uh man, this is beautiful. I'm so excited about this because entangling. Wanna look this up. Oh boy. G one seven oh seven. Write this down. We're gonna nail this fusion to the cross. Uh entangle. Entangle. Entangle it. 
G1707. Okay. Uh, let's get it right here. Make sure I spelled it right. Entangled himself, G1707. Now we're going to read exactly what it means. And you can verify it. I love this. Boy, this, this is going to knock your socks off. To entwine, that is figuratively involved. So you get involved with it, right? Get involved with it. Entangle in self with. Because brethren will try to be slick. We're gonna, I'm telling you, brethren, you're going to love it. You're going to love what the Lord has to say from his word. The affairs of this life. Okay, so now we got, we got to say, oh, oh Zan, you're over, you're over simplifying a lesson. No, I am not. Oh, no, I am not. Uh, we're going to pull up and show all these words so that there can be no foolishness involved. Affairs. A transaction, that is negotiation. That word is G4230. So I say, well, what is he trying to display his knowledge? No. Uh, I'm trying to show how you shouldn't let men fool you with their so called understanding and such great knowledge that they claim that they have uh, as if they're so smart that we can't read. We can read too. We have books, the same books. They got G4230. And that is affairs. I want to make sure I put the same word here. Affairs of this world. Now, now we're going to show where the devil hides. The Lord say, no way. See, we're going to show you right where he's sitting. Okay. Why is that? That he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. If you are in the war, I've been in the military. If you're in the military, even in training, you, you can't just... And the time, I'm going to give me some chips from a stove. You can't even go to the commissary when you want to, depending on what type of freedoms you have. And it's right there on the base because you're in training. When you're actually in a wall, you just don't go, hey, man, I'm going to take a break right quick. I'm going to give me a, a Subway sandwich that I packed in my, yeah, you do. I bet you won't get to eat it because you won't have no teeth because they'll hit you in the mouth. They're not going to let you do that. You're supposed to be focused on the war that you're involved with. Now, someone may say, well, Brother, what do you mean? We have jobs, we have families, we have entertainment venues we're allowed to go to. That's right. He's talking about intertwining your spiritual work with the affairs of this world. Boy, we're going to see why the devil is sitting today. I'm telling you now, saints, just like Revelation said. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. That's another area we have to look at. So we got affairs of this world. So the individual must not entangle himself. Okay. In addition to entangle, the individual must strive lawfully. Now, he's going to give the explanation. The husband that labored must be first partakers of fruit. Oh, watch this. So why would, why would that say? The individual must also, here's another air strong, lawfully be involved. If you partake of the fruit, you ate it. How do you consume the work in the church? You're part of it. You got to be involved with the work. If you eat the grapes, your labor, you have tasted, you have tasted it. The fruit of our labor, we involve ourselves with the work. Just sit back and let everybody else do it. Hey Amen. Good job. You have to be involved. So you have to not get entangled with the fast of this world and the strive of it. And you have to be involved. You have to eat. You have to, are, are you a partake of the fruit? If I say, if you partake of the fruit, yeah. What is our fruit? The fruit of our labor, what we work on. If you're not tasting, if you're not involved with it, you're not a part of it. No one can deny this. What kind of man works in a vineyard? He says, man, I've never tasted these grapes. I've been in a vineyard 20 years. No, that's a lie. He's going to always say, is he going to taste the grape to see what it is that he's worked for, what he's a part of? You don't eat the dirt. You don't bite on the vine. You don't chew on the tools. You taste the grape, the fruit. Here's the fact. The Lord comes, and he wants to 
partake of our fruit. What is he eating? Real grapes? Grapefruits? No. He eats the work that we do. He's not going to eat nonsense that's vain, deceitful, and he's definitely not going to eat sinful work. So this is what we have to understand. He says, consider what I say. You look at the key word, first partaker. See, if you're not doing the work, you can't come up and tell me about the work. That's why I'm going to get these guys. <laughs> I've never figured this out in my life. Get a guy baptized, a Baptist preacher, a Methodist preacher, and they put him to preaching. He hasn't even eaten of the work. He, has, who's he served? Has he visited some sick people? Old people. Sick people. Has he counseled anybody? Well, he's not at that point yet to counsel. He's sure not at the point to preach. He hasn't eaten. He doesn't know what the fruit tastes like. Gra grapes kind of taste like bananas. That's a lie. They don't. That's because he hasn't eaten them. If someone told you they're working a vineyard, yeah, kind of tastes kind of similar to a banana. That's what I say. Grapes? Absolutely not. They're, they're thick and they're different, of course. They're much more firm. You can throw a grape down. You throw the inwards of a grape down on the ground, it still won't pop. If you peel the seeds, you throw a banana down, it's going to splatter. It's a different fruit. Who told, are, you, are you sure you're working the vineyard? Question's going to come out. He has no authority to be behind the pulpit. None. And, only, and see, you know what that says? It says, well, he basically knows how to preach. They did that for someone to use someone like uh, Apollos. They did not do that for Apollos. Pull them aside and talk. And there's no time that they talk about in Acts chapter 18 how long it was before they sent a letter to approve of him. There is no time frame mentioned. So for someone to jump up and say they did it to Apollos, is a lie. That which is not written on, do not comment on, because you would damage yourself. There's no scripture that says how long it was before that letter was sent out, before they sent a letter out. And just take him straight there. Well, just, just fix the baptism of John only. And say he, he knew the word of God. But except he knew all the baptism of John. Was he teaching on how to praise God through worship? No. Because he only knew what David did. See how ridiculous that is to say he straight preach. How would he know how to praise God? How he knows it's David. He, he, he walk in with a heart. I'm going to praise the Lord. What else does he know? If he knows only the law, he knows nothing else but David's worship. So how can Apollos go and teach without having been taught? That's so ridiculous. What does he know about the Lord's Supper? Has no one took no grapefruit juice and, and unleavened bread as a meal amongst the Jews unless you were a Christian? So that's why I tell you guys, brethren, if you know what you do, you're supposed to be able to talk about what you do. All I did is just mention something every saint does. I didn't have to go to school for it. I have to deep study and meditation on it. We do this every first day of the week. But Apollos wasn't doing it because all he knew he was of the law. And of what John said, he has no knowledge of how to worship in the New Testament church. Why? Because he that is least in the kingdom of God, according to the New Testament, is greater than John. This guy's only a student of John's work. This is so ridiculous to say. They get this, all he did is fix him on baptism and send him off preaching. Why does the scriptures validate? That's none, because they didn't do that. It wasn't done like that. But you'll help me and say that, which is a lie. People get excited. You have to be calm when you're teaching, whether you're outside on a parking lot, in a pulpit, in your bedroom, talking to your spouse. Be calm, because you're just a saying thing. I remember how I said one day, boy, you just get a saying thing. Well, you know, you're you being said something. We were laughing and talking one day about that. You have to, have to contain your spirit. Your spirit is subject to you. Even when it spoke in prophecy, it's still subject to you. You can tell, okay. Calm down, spirit. Look, let me tell you what you need to say. We'll work together here and we'll say the right thing. You have to talk to you. So we're saying here clearly, he says, verse 7, still in 2 Timothy 2, consider what I say. And the Lord give the understanding in all things. That's what Paul says. Okay, think about what I'm saying now, Timothy. You cannot get entangled. Now let's go back to the lesson. After we've read this text. We're talking still about, test your work to see if they are dead. This is a Bible study though. And now we're going to talk about how men and women get entangled or get involved is the word involved. Entangled don't mean well, just controlling you. It just means to get involved with the affairs, these things, 
that are in this world. You cannot accomplish your goal. Still got to strive lawfully. Still got to be involved. You have to be a part of it. Now let's listen at this thought. When we gather together and we say we're going to call the church together. Brethren, that is a very, very important thing to know. Whether we call the church together Tuesday night, Thursday morning, Friday midday, it's irrelevant. When we call the church together. If we are calling the church together to do something spiritual, it better be nothing but spiritual people involved. No. I just need to know if the mayor of Humble is a member of the Lord's church. And if we call the mayor of Humble here to say something on Thursday midday, he better be coming to talk about Jesus. Amen? Okay, Sister Hamilton has a hand up. You know, I was just thinking to myself, um, this is really sad that, you know, we have to even, like, talk about this. This should be, like, shouldn't even be something that we should have to talk about. And I'm not saying, like, that to be slick and say, let's not talk about it. I'm actually saying that, yeah, I'm actually saying that because why would you bring the mayor of Umble? You know, he doesn't have the spirit. And the spirit it, he teaches us, you know, through one another. Mm -hmm. So why would you bring an unbeliever in the midst of, you know, saints that have been set apart? That don't even make sense. That just, that, that's sad. Well, we didn't come to talk about Jesus. See, that's what a person will say in a sense like this. They'll say, it's a good question. We didn't come to worship. Remember that word? You hear. I hear it here. Brother, right now we here and everybody's fairly young. I mean, even our elders are not really old, old men when they can't function. But it's a young church. We've about 13 years. That's, that's young for a church. That church been just 40, 50, 100 years. I mean, you got a lot of churches of Christ. But 13 years is kind of a new church. It's a new work, believe me. And uh, some people would have you think it's always not because we have done so much as a union. We had elders so quick and we did what the Lord asked us. Now, we've been there for hell. It's only been 13 years. The key is, is that the church being established, you'll hear terms like, well, we're not coming to worship. That's very deceitful. Then why are you calling me? Because I got stuff to do. I'm not going to go to the park with my children. We're going to meet here Thursday midday. What fuck? Because the mayor of Humble coming here. We have a community get together day. We're gonna be selling hot dogs. They're gonna be preaching too, really. With the mayor, he's gonna preach. Well, no, he's gonna speak. So we're gonna speak. Is it a funeral? Somebody died? No, we just call together, you know, just come together as a community. So we're a part of the community. Is he a part of us? Or what are we coming together for? We're not talking about running for us. He's already elected. Well, what are we coming here for? See, I'm still here. You, know, you notice I haven't got my question asked. We're just trying to do a good thing, old Zan. That's as much as you'll get. And of course, I'll be nailed to the cross if I'm opening my mouth. If I should be one of the members with a situation like that. I've been down to the couple of things like that. I'm telling you, brother. Ostracized, talking about, and so have you. But down so I wanted to leave the church at one time. I feel so discouraged. Because it's like, well, what are we trying to do? I might as well go back to the Catholic church. And we don't act a fool like this. And, and you think somebody can a Catholic then go back, someone might would say, go, oh, I don't you. You're nothing but trouble here for us. Nevertheless, as Paul said, I am what I am, <laughs> and by the grace of God, and so are you, and you're going to do his work, and so am I. If either one of us get out of line, we're going to help each other. Because we don't have time for nonsense. And I mean that's so sincere. And so we're looking at the fact is, is that uh, if you call the church to order, this is what the term ecclesia deals with. And I want you to understand. Look at Acts. Is somebody waiting to speak? It's like, oh, go ahead, Ham. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't know. That. Actually, now you finna jump right into I the point. I want the audience to participate. I need your help. You finna jump right into the point that I was about to make well, anyway. Preacher, you might help. Help me. Help me gain it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm ready, bro. I'm ready to learn. No, nah, I mean, use it. Use the word church. Yeah. I mean, people like, like I said, you know, this is a discussion that 
uh, me and the Nelsey had a couple of times, like maybe a week or two ago, or something like that, about uh, like etymology, the way that words develop over time or whatever, and just talking about how you how you word and how you say things, you know. And you know, we were discussing about like how a word can change its meaning as far as in everyday society right. over time. You know, what perfect example of the word gay. You know what I mean? When you read the burn the gay in the Bible, it just talks about happy. You know what I mean? Bright, brilliant, whatever. Exactly. You know, but uh, in, in our society, you use the word gay, then automatically you think homosexuality. You know what I mean? Because that's the way that it's used in our society today. You know? And so, uh, you know, when, like I said, in, you know, we were just talking about how figure of speech and stuff like that, how you go about communicating in, in this world. And, and, and just talking about God understands the difference as far as word development and stuff like that, what you mean when you say, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, you say, you think about the word church, the word church has never changed its meaning. It's, it's, it means what it means. Right. And you can make, people, people, people may say other things and like may use it in different ways or whatever. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about the Bible, you're talking about what the God says is the church. Mm -hmm. The word church means called out. It's, it's, it's the called out group. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you, when you say, okay, we're calling the church to do what we are, I'm, you know, the church is going to do this. We're trying to do something nice in the community. You said something key. You're like, are we a part of the, of the world? And, the, the, and like I said, if you just understand what the word church means and you understand, we're not a part of them. We're not. And so for you to be like, we want to try to do something, we want to show that we're a part of this community, because that's the, that's, the, that's the concept, like, exactly. we're a part of this community, we want to know that people, let them, let them know that we're here, that, you know, we're a part of this community, we care about this community, whatever the case may be, but the whole word of the word, the whole meaning of the word church is called out from them. Hey. We are separate from the world. You know, but like I said, but that goes to show you that you, and, and, and that's what happens when you no longer do the works, you forget the doctrine. You know, when you when you develop your own agenda, then you're no longer concerned. You're no longer concerning yourself with pleasing the master. Mm -hmm. You just you know, and so your your mind is wax gross. You know what I mean? You don't think like you don't think righteously. You think you think about what you're trying to accomplish. You're not thinking about righteousness. But the simple understanding of the word church would tell you we're not a part of the world. That's right. We're not a part of this community. As an individual, I am as a human being. I live in this area, whatever the case may be. But as the church, we're not a part of this community. We are we are separate. Amen. I mean the whole word of sanctification, it means that you are set apart. Right. You're holy. You are different. You're and so and I can say, I mean I understand as far as having a presence spiritually uh -huh. to say, hey look, you know, the word the, the word of God is among you. You know what I mean? The people of God are among you. But that's done through spirituality, through spiritual work, through loving one another. I, I do following the strict the examples that God has given us. You look at um, now we're talking about scripture. Look at John chapter seventeen. I'm done. John chapter seventeen. Yeah, John chapter seventeen. Um, uh, let's start at verse thirteen. It says, "And now come out to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves." It says, "I have given them thy word, and the word hath hated them." Because they are not of the world, Amen. even as I am not of the world. That would be the community. Now you can say community, right? Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. No, he said, he said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. He says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He reiterates in verse 16. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I, I also, I also sent them into the world. And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified to the truth. He says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And so... <coughs> And but but see if you and like I said if you slow down you actually read that with belief and that's and that's another problem I, I promise I'm trying to keep it short. <laughs> oh come on man this is the lesson. This you don't you don't we always talk about all the time you have to read with belief. Yes. If 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 you're sincere if, if you're sincere about pleasing God then you read this for understanding sake to learn and to to like grab the thought of what Jesus is trying to say and to apply it to live it. 
I mean, if you're just reading over it, just reading the words, then you don't get it. But if you actually slow down and actually try, you read it, try actually and learn what it is that not what I want to do for my own, or how can I use this to accomplish my own goal? But you use it to try to learn exclusively what it is that Jesus wants me to think. How does he? What does he want me to be? Mm -hmm. Then you see clearly that God. I mean, that Jesus simply is saying, like, I, I am not of this world. I don't roll with the world. I don't get. I, I don't. I don't get down with it. That's why he don't go around seeking their glory. All, the only glory that I seek is my father's. He said, "I do my father's will always. I don't speak myself. I only speak. Uh, I only speak uh, the things that I hear from my father. That's it. That's, right. That's his doctrine. And so when he says this, he says, you know, that they may know that I am in thee. He's saying by the things that I do, the way I carry myself, the works that I do, they know that it, it you sent me because they come from you. And he said, I. He said, he said they in me. So they're gonna do what I told them to do, which is what you told me to tell them to do." And they're gonna know that you do, they are. They, they're gonna know that and the world will know that they are from you, because they do what I told them to do, which which you told me to tell them to do. If that makes sense, you see what I'm saying? That's and so, it's not by bake sales, and not by working in the community. It's not by all those things that you knew that Jesus was in God. Mm -hmm. It was by Him doing the things that God told Him to do that you knew that He was in God. And it's always been that way. If you read the Bible from front to back, it's always been they they was people were sanctified because they did what God told them to do. Right. And so we as the church, we're sanctified from the world. We're not of this world. And the reason why, is that we, and, and people know it, because we, we are not with you. It's not, it's not that we automatically be like, you're not of the church. We, we turn our nose up at people or we push people away on purpose. But the whole point is that we live differently because we live by a totally co different code of living. We live by the way that God has us to live versus you living by the way that you want to live. Right. And it's clearly evident. And so like I said, we are the called out group of people. We are like, and we told me, me and Javier had a conversation the other day. I'm done. We have a monopoly on spirituality. Yes. That's it's, it's, we have exclusive rights to it. That's right. And so, the, you did an excellent job in the lesson. The world feeds its own. There are plenty of services that provide food and clothing and whatever else you may need, whatever kind of assistance that you may need in the world because the world takes care of its own. But as far as spirituality is concerned, there's only one place that the world can go to get spirituality, and that's the church. Praise God. That's where we've been gifted, and that's what that's our that's our role in this world is to bring spirituality to shine light, as that's the Bible says. With light is just truth. He says, so "Sanctify them that through that truth, that word is truth." That's what we bring. That's what we offer the community. We don't, you're offering them those things. They do it already. That's right. That ain't our role. That's why Jesus didn't feed them again because you got that. That ain't our job. What we give you is what you is something that you can't get nowhere else. Truth. That's right. Hey, Amen. You know how powerful that is. That is so God bless you, brother. Because it is the word involved. When we leave here, all of us are involved in the community we live. Yeah. We can with garage sale, we be involved with everything. Uh, uh, <laughs> you may have a a a, a, a thing where you plant trees with them. That's a, I doubt how to plant trees, but the world. I thought he was planted in the community. Our children don't go to church of Christ schools, covered in dome, where they don't get to go out. They don't put on church of Christ football teams. They don't. They don't go to church of Christ Greek clubs. We're in the community. We're in the gospel. They baseball for a long time. But when you try to make the church connected, now you're saying you are the nominated church because they are a part of the community because they are in the world. Brother Amen. read the script. They are darkness and we are light. And do you know what? And that's what lets you know your brethren are right. Amen. And you got to watch them. But if you don't say something about it or say something to them or shy away, they'll bite you. Oh, yeah, they'll bite you, brother. And you will be sick. And you'll be doing that's why the Lord said when he told Ezekiel when you attack them, mark those who wept when they saw Israel's action. What do you think Israel was doing just walking around naked? Israel was just doing evil deeds. Complaining about God isn't doing anything different than he's doing for the world, trying to be like the world, trying to want to be a part of it. We think it's a big deal to worship Baal. It's no different than, than, than reading T D J's books. And try to teach with his tactics. <laughs> he is male. He's male servant. That is no difference. And we look so bad. I could do words your bell just because it's a little a little horse head thing or something. Right. Or some animal. Does T D Jason look like Jesus? No. He doesn't act like Jesus. No. He doesn't talk like Jesus. No. So what's the difference? There is none. Amen. 
It says in Romans 1, worship the creature, which he is made, see he's made, versus the creator, which is blessed forever. See, that's a, see man doesn't like to talk about worshiping man. He likes to talk about worshiping statues <coughs> and thoughts, but he doesn't like to talk about worshiping man because he knows he does it all the time. So it's a problem. You know, you know brother, I, I wait because yeah, this is a good lesson. And uh, through the years of learning, uh, I'm very adamant about study. That's why we are so into we have to study. We have to study because man can feed us anything. For years and years and years of being in the church, you see things done mm -hmm. and you think that is the right way of how it should be done and done and you question it not right. because it's done and it's done all over the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. So it is done and you don't question that. But if you don't go and search, as the Bereans did, you search for truth. Yes. You have to search for truth to know, is this what God would have us to do? Mm -hmm. And the only the time that you would probably do that is when someone, such as yourself, bring it up. Put a question in your head. Really? We're not supposed to be doing that? Mm, mm -hmm. I thought we were. We did it for years and years and years and years. And you think nothing of it. You do think that it is a church duty. And I'm only being real. That you do man. you Keep do think real. that it's a church duty that we go out and feed the world or we invite the world out with for food and what have you. Mm -hmm. But then it also made me think of the scripture of Matthew twenty two twenty one, which Matthew talks about twenty two twenty one. Okay. It talks 20. about rendering to Caesar what belongs to Caesar yes. and rendering to God what belongs to God. Amen. And and the separation it's of the two being flesh and spirit. Mm -hmm. And um it also made me think about I don't know if you've ever walked into a room a place and there is a stink yes. and there are people in that room already but then when you walk in immediately there's a stink yes. and you smell it yes. but then after you be in that room so long you long you no it's longer like smell it yeah. you, you you know you become absorbed smell. into it you smell it? No, <laughs> but you did when you first walked in. Amen. And I'm bringing that analogy up to say that is the way it is with what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, when you first walk in and you know something is wrong, why were you out here washing cars? Why, why are we washing this person's car or mm -hmm. uh, that person car? It's a stink. Mm -hmm. But then you, you, nobody is, you know, everybody, everybody you know that are members of the body out there washing cars, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's no longer a stink because you're in it now and you've absorbed the smell or you've absorbed the work and it's like, oh, it's nothing wrong with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on, bring your cars or whatever or sell your pies or whatever you do. But what I'm, but the reason I brought that up is because that's, what we're, that's where we are. That's, that's where we are with our members yeah. uh, of many congregations. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not asking questions. They just walk in and go, something stink you know why all of a sudden we got this piano sitting over here and nobody been sitting there for f months and months and months and nobody ain't said nothing but you you notice it but then no longer you notice it because it's 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 just a part of you've gotten, used to, you've gotten used to the smell and that is the way it is with us in the world we've gotten used to doing the things that we think are right without going into the word to find out that's not the way it's white. It, that's not the way it's supposed to be. We are supposed to be like the Bereans. We are supposed to go in there and 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 dig. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to be doing this to find out if this is true or not? Or, you know, are we supposed to be rendering to Caesar? Are we supposed to be? And another thing I want to bring out too is a lot of our congregations have locked themselves into the government's funds. Oh yeah. And the reason yeah. when you lock yourself into the government funds. You have some regulations that you're going to have to follow. And some of those regulations may be that you have to be a part of that community. Yes. And you have to do things for that community. The, yes. the world is going to send you turkeys. Yes. Because that's a part of those funds that you got when you decide to get whatever it is that you get for the church and what have you. Right. That's a part of that. So now you better find out what to do with those turkeys. Mm -hmm. And you cannot give them all to your members. Sure so that, you know, because you're getting funds from me. And I want you to use these funds in a certain way, and you have to in order for you to continue to get these funds. Yes. The members don't know anything about that. Again, that's mm -hmm. why we search and study, yes. because the members don't know nothing about the church getting funds from the government to operate. You just think we're operating smoothly. Mm -hmm. But then the, behind the scenes, there's so many other things going on, which cause other things to take place. And we start doing these things because we have to keep these funds going. 
So therefore, we're going to ease it in scripturally, deceitfully. Yeah. We're going to ease them in yeah. and put a scripture behind it mm -hmm. to say this is why we, sh we should be doing it. Even to get an example of, of us. Jesus fed the 3,000. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, he did. But did you go back in and search that whole mm -hmm. passage of how he fed the 3,000 and why he fed them and, and so forth and so forth? That's what we're not doing mm -hmm. as members and as congregations. We're not asking questions. When someone do something, you ask why. Mm -hmm. If you're not satisfied, ask why again. If you're still not that, ask why, ask how. And that's what we need to go back to, the basic of how is this supposed to be done? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? Are we the Church of Christ? Prove it. Prove it. Scripture. Mm -hmm. Prove it. And we'll be on track. We'll come back to being who we that's are true. as a congregation. And I don't mean this congregation, but I mean as a congregation, as a body, when we stop dictating, I'm sorry, not dictating, when we stop rece receiving things from the world mm -hmm. that we have to to give uh validation to right what okay we gave you three thousand dollars what what are we what are you doing with it well we had a car wash yesterday <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah we, we spent for the soap yeah. we bought the soap we bought the yeah. towels and whatever and now we're going to give it out to the community because mm -hmm. we're going to wash three member cars and one community car because that's the way it has to be you have to show you wash the community car in order for you to keep it so you know that's what we have to look at amen amen sister those in hands up and then i don't know who else is uh thanks to the house hand went on too uh white pass the mic uh that's also unlawful uh to make decisions without letting the body know and uh it can be illegal when you're it's, but it's private and public. It's not exactly like the United Way, but but our brethren won't push the legality of it, and I wouldn't either. I'll just try to get the brethren change, or if they're going to do sin, leave. But that's unlawful scripturally to make decisions and not tell the body. Read Acts 15. You have to tell the body what you're going to do before you do it. They say, we're going to send this letter. So you can't do that kind of stuff. We done got involved with the government because the elders. No, the elders don't have the power. These are evangelists. If it's only an evangelist, he doesn't have that power in and of himself. He should always function with the other leaders. They don't have to be designated. That's how this congregation started. And I'm one of the ones still alive to talk about it. We never function like that. Jump up and just do something. But way before we had designated leaders. Because God was in control. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So anybody doing that, you might as well go be a part of the denomination church because that's, that's what you become. Because you're part, you're entangled. So you can't please, remember what Paul said, you can't please him that chose you as a soldier. That would be Jesus. And we're not pleasing Jesus. I would like to see us get to heaven not pleasing Jesus. Sister Ozan, thank you for waiting. Thank Sister, you, Sister Power is absolutely right. I remember at our old church, um, I think it was a flood or something, a big storm, and we we're in charge of passing out mattresses. Yes. And uh, we gave a lot of weight to the community. And what we bothered me the part, most yeah. was that I'm we part, had saints at our church didn't even have mattresses, and they needed it. And I fought heavily for them. I'm like, why don't we help our saints? Why are we giving it to these people that don't even go to church? So, yes. and then they like got upset because I was questioning why they were doing it. Yes, but did. I really was upset about it. I, I, I'm like, we have members here that didn't have mattresses. I think they gave uh, freezers or something, yes. refrigerators. And then I remember one time Denzel Washington came. This was right after service. They let Denzel Washington get up there and speak. And I'm like, why are they letting him up there? Yeah, he's a big time celebrity, but he's not a member of the church. Yeah. And then one time we had Lee Brown came. Yes, and I'm like, did. why is he here? But when I say things, it was like I was the person that was the problem. Something and like I questioned. That. And then I'm like, yeah. so nobody sees that this is wrong? Yeah. So you get frustrated. You get very, And there have been so many times I wanted to leave that church. I had a sister at another church because I was about to leave Steve yes. <laughs> there by himself. And a sister I'm, said, no, stay with your husband. You can't leave. But I saw the falseness that was yes. going on and I thought I, I mean I would talk to brother Jones because I'm not, not scared of nobody but God I don't fear nobody but Amen. God and I went Amen. head and head with brother Jones yes I'm calling his name out yes. and telling them Amen. his error and what he was doing wrong so sometimes they don't listen to women I don't know what it is you can pull out scriptures you can tell them everything but they will not listen to us and they didn't even listen to you That's so right. 
But anyway, um, Psalms 3, 33, verse 4. Psalms 33 and 4, okay. For the word of the Lord is right, mm -hmm. and all his works are done in truth. Mm. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. And we just have to remember to Amen. stay faithful and tell people when they're wrong. Amen. Well, and don't let us become like that. God bless you, sister. And I, you know, I, that's, and that's what made me brought up mayor. See, a lot of people think, uh, Sister Hammers his hands up too. A lot of people think they know what I'm going to talk about. Men up my mouth. They think it's, man, I was a part of this. They don't even know what's in my heart. I could care less what anybody doing. I'm talking about what I did. And if it's what you're doing now, then you need to stop. Because it's, it's wrong. We're going to show the scripture. Well, we had Lee Brown that. I was somewhat dazed and confused about it. <laughs> you know, but when, you, when, you, when you're not a spiritually strong person, by the time you figure out what's going on, they've stolen all your goods and left. And so, of course, you repent, you change, and you, you learn from there. Lord, forgive them. Never going never gonna to fall for that one again. But, you know, it's still damage, collateral damage to others. You know, but that's wrong, brethren. That is wrong. And there's nothing you're going to do to call the assembly, and we're going to prove that, ecclesia, to hear the lost for any purpose. Not that, if you want to go, go yourself. Call people on the phone. Hey, I'm going to go down here and hear the mess. People go. Don't call the saints. Even if they're bad and they scoot in at the end. Say, wait a minute, we'll disperse. And y'all can meet at Fud Ruckers and talk. And close the door, Bob. We're leaving. Tell him he can get in his Cadillac and go to the mayor and we'll talk to him at Fud Ruckers if you want to go. Not, not where the Lord's people are meeting. Because that's for the spiritual work to carry out. That's what it's for. It doesn't matter if it's under your pond tree. It doesn't matter if it's a building. Thank you for waiting, Sister Helen. Thank you, Sister Helen. Go ahead, Sister. Thank you, Brother. Uh, sister um, Powers made me think about uh, when she said ask. You know, ask questions. Yes. But um, when I was in the Baptist church, you know, you couldn't ask the preacher a question because he ran the church. In the church of Christ, it's like that but in that's, many locations. But, yeah, that's what I was going to because. No, I'm sorry. Forgive me. No, I'm it's sorry. okay. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that a lot of people, not just with the preacher, that mentality is in the church because, because we have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Now, the Holy Ghost is greater than us. But he dwells in us because that's how God has made it. Mm -hmm. But even when, not us, but I'm just saying we talk to one another. Mm -hmm. You know, like some Christians believe like they're so high that they can't fall. That's right. And so when they're telling you, well, we, we do do this. We do this for the community and this and this and that. They feel like, well, we're the members of the church. Mm -hmm. So we that makes me like big and higher. It's almost like you have the mentality of one man rule. Mm -hmm. You understand like the world. Because the world is like you can't ask certain people certain things like the preacher's wife mm -hmm. or um, the preacher the uh, preacher or his people mm -hmm. that he's with you know the young mm -hmm. brothers that that serve not the young brothers i'm you know in the in the world his people he has people mm -hmm. and they're young and he's training them and things like that huh he's a yeah. his people yeah. and so that's how some people in the church think the the sister that teaches bible study or the brother that teaches the most and i know that brothers are given the keys to the kingdom they are allowed to baptize women or not mm -hmm. but some people think that oh this sister teaches so much she can't be questioned no mm -hmm. god has put Everybody in the church, how they're supposed to be. Yes. Men are the preachers. Women, we teach, but we don't teach like the brothers. Mm -hmm. And so nobody is not to be questioned. That's Everybody right. can be questioned, especially when you're talking about God's word, which Amen. is his word and not our word. Okay. You know what I mean? So. Amen. Well said, Brother Helms, I believe is the next. Brother. Hey man, this is good. This is what we needed to 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 as we move farther in the lesson to validate what we're talking about. Go ahead, brother Hamilton. Thank you, sister Hamilton. Nah, excellent, sister. excellent, excellent comments that have been made. Um, and this is you good. know I'm enjoying you 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 talk about sister Paul brought an excellent analogy, excellent point. You know, saints don't question things anymore. Mm -hmm. And it, it's 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 a it's a it's really a sad thing. It's a multi level layered issue that has to be dealt with. You know, mm -hmm. but trying to deal with it as simple as possible saints are lazy amen 
they the they want yeah, they'll, they'll be getting lazy, yeah, man. Yeah, they, mean, they they become fraud. slothful. I'm talking about talking about that they have this mentality. Yeah, they become lazy. They become complacent. They don't want to question. Right. They don't want to know, because it's because as they say, ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. You see, saying not knowing is freedom. Though so you could though you think because you don't have to think about nothing. You just because and then in congregations like that, you have it's always somebody is pushed forth as the leader whether it be the preacher or whether it be if you have elders uh, sometimes in some congregations elders are like like god's little cousin like amen. like we have like you gotta talk to the elders like 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 they like they run the church yeah. like literally like they're not to be questioned whatever they say whatever they tell us to do that's what we do you mm -hmm. know what i mean like well the elders well, talk about souls. it exactly they use these scriptures out of context they, you know, they make decisions what's best for the church, and we we follow their instructions. Right. That, that, that's that's what's drilled into the saints' minds, you know. And so, you know, that's how you have it. And then, like I said, you have behind the doors, you have you have these kind of things going on. She's talking about you taking government money and stuff like that. And she's absolutely right. You have certain obligations that go along with that stuff. Always so oh, and just hit on them. Like I said, she like opened the door to exactly what situation. That's, yeah, how that's how that stuff goes on. The, the, the leaders don't go and tell the church, hey, this is what's going on. We, we hemmed up. So we got to do this. They're going to try to reach for some type of script to try to justify. Mm -hmm. And they're going to twist it so they can, they can get away with whatever they, they got to accomplish, whatever they got to do. Mm -hmm. And the church don't ask questions. So they just say, okay, well, he gave us, they gave us a scripture and everything. Mm -hmm. don't, don't question the leadership. They look for your souls, whatever. And, that, and that's, that's the way that these things go. Nobody wants to think or be diligent mm -hmm. in their study. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's everybody, everybody wants, people want the Baptist pattern. They well, want sure. it. You go to church, I mean, you think about it, and, and you know, you open it holding up the can, you ain't going to be able to deal with all this in one lesson. There's no way. You, you, in the denominational world, going to, just going to church gives you a badge, like, a free pass, yes. it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's born from Catholicism. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want to do as long as I go to the, make my confession. I'm yes. good. I do my hell, like you say all that. I used to be what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you you say your hell marriage or whatever, and you good, yeah. and you go about your business. You know what I mean? And the, and the denomination has followed that pattern of the mother hall, and it's like it's the same concept. Mm -hmm. You may not have a priest, but you do whatever you want to do as long as you go to church, you paying your tithes. You good to go. You good to go. You're good to go. And 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 you have many saints that have come out from that world, and they've been either hoodwinked or bribed or whatever to come into the church. Mm -hmm. But at the end, of, and that's the reason why this whole pattern we're talking about is so faulty, is because in order to survive in Christianity, you have to be sincere. Mm -hmm. In order to make it, that's why he said you have to strive for masteries. I mean, you have, you have you have to strive lawfully if you want to strive for masteries. If you want to get the victory, that's what he's talking about in Timothy, you, the first scripture you read. You have to do it lawfully. You have to you have to run the race according to the rules that are established in order to win. Mm -hmm. You can't just run any kind of way. However, you want to you know you can't be switching lanes and like cutting people off away. You have to run your lane and run it the way that the race, the regulations in the race are stated. So anyway, right. people like that like like that. I get to come as long as I come to church, I'm holy. It don't matter what I do outside of church. Right. As long as I come, you know, with the acceptable amount of time, quota, whatever, whether it be once a Sunday or whether it be, t you know, twice a month or whatever, I show my face, hey, hey, y'all. And then you go up there and say, I sinned. And then everybody says, hey, are you good? Then I'm good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sister Hamilton talked about you have a communication with people y'all talk. And it's like, because I say, well, I'm going to go to Church of Christ. That automatically gives, in people's mind, that automatically gives whatever you're doing a stamp of approval. Like, Man, it's holy yeah. now because I'm a member of the church and I said it or I'm doing it. The world may do it, but that's the world. See, we the church, so it's different. Because mm. auto, we, uh, it's automatically becomes holy like, because we give it a stamp, a Church of Christ stamp. It's holy now. It's holy exactly. now. And, it, and people like to be deceived in that way. Mm -hmm. It's no different than Israel. Israel liked to have it like that. They like to be taken advantage of, whatever. You know what I mean? Because they don't, they, they, that's what they, deep down, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. They want that, he said, they promise you liberty, but they bring you to bondage. Yes. And that is, that's exactly what's going on in the, in the, in the church. Mm -hmm. Is that, and, and the people love to have it so. That's right. They love to be able to say, well, it's okay because I'm in the church. And right. a cat be like, and saints be like, okay. And I don't yeah. think twice about it because it's cool. I ain't got to think about it no more. Now I can just do whatever I want to do. And we can roll. Like any idea is acceptable. Any any action or any work is cool as long as we stamp Church of Christ on it. Yeah. It's cool. Mm -hmm. So when that opens up the door for anything and everything anybody wanna do, I can get involved with anything I want to get involved with or I don't have to get involved with it. And that's the reason why you don't push it as like you say, is it a sin or is it something we gotta do? Nah. 
you ain't got to come out here and do this. It's just a good thing to try to do. Okay, cool. I can do it if I want to. If I don't, mm -hmm. it's ultimate liberty. And that's what people want. They want to have as much room as they want to be able to move around and just lay wide leg in the bed. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they, hate, they hate restriction. But at the end of the day, the way is narrow. You yes, see what I'm saying? Yes. It's like the way is straight. The gate is narrow. You can't change that. Mm -hmm. You can try to make, you can pretend to be and say whatever you want to say. But Jesus is clear. That's right. The way is narrow. I mean, the way is straight. The gate is narrow. Mm -hmm. And few that be that enter in. That's right. But at the judgment, that's what it's going to be. That's what, it, that's what it's going to be. Like I said, so like if you're going to be sincere, you know, you have to understand that saints are fallible. They they do err. It's just because a person is saint don't mean they're holy. Don't mean that they have the right intentions. Don't mean that they're sincere. I mean, you have saints that, that they may be leaders, they may be whatever. They do not have your best, your best spiritual interests in mind. They have other agendas. You know yes. what I mean? They trying to accomplish things. So at the end of the day, you have to study for yourself. You have to be sincere about your studies. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And 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 you have to understand that everybody's not going to be saved. You can talk all day long and you still got to have communications. But at the end of the day, everybody's not going to do it. They and I'm saying I'm only saying that to say like the new like uh, Constance was saying. You get discouraged by talking to people yes. because you think nobody wants this. But the, you have to understand and acknowledge, like, listen, everybody's not going to accept it. That's just the reality. Everybody's right. not going to be saved. It's only it, it, it takes a special person to be saved. That's why the Bible says, "Few that be that find it," because and that's why the Bible says, "I'm done." Jesus says, "God is looking for true worshipers." That's what he's that's what he's searching for. You got a lot, there were a lot of people in Israel, and those those were God's people. But, but the Bible said Jesus, Jesus said he's looking for true worshipers. Yes. A lot of people that were going to Israel are going to Jerusalem to go worship. But Jesus look, but God is looking for true worshipers. That's right. They worship him in spirit and in truth. You know what I mean? And, and it takes, that's a special kind of person to say, I'm willing to surrender all. I'm willing to give up all. I'm willing to sacrifice all. I'm willing to sacrifice myself, my own agenda, my own feelings. All I care about, all I want to do is please you. That's it. That's right. That's who goes to heaven. That's Anybody right. that falls short of that, you ain't gonna make it. And it don't matter what you deceive yourself to believe or what other people believe about you. God knows, and that's the only kind of person that's gonna make it to heaven is a person that's willing to sell out everything. Because Jesus set the tone, He gave up His life, He gave up His spot in heaven for momentarily to come and be a man and wrapped in flesh, and took all kind of punishment for, and He sacrificed His life because His Father asked Him to, and because that's He loved right. us enough. And he says, the regard that's serving no greater than the master. So that's the, that is the person, that's the soul that will make it to heaven. It's the one who, who will follow the example of Jesus, will, will lay down all and please his father. That's my only objective. That don't mean you don't live in his life. You do things, you accomplish things, whatever. But at the end of the day, nothing supersedes that objective. That's who goes to heaven. And few there be that'll, 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 that'll accomplish that. Amen. Well said. That's right. So what is, his instructions will tell us what to do. In the world, we will not be confused. Sister Paul, thank you, Brother Hal. You got to, you got to get rid of everything. Says count the cost. It's gonna cost you things. Go ahead, Sister. Uh, immediately, what comes to mind to me is Diana, Diana. Yeah, that's what. Well, you read my mind. Yeah, that's you, what, you, <laughs> amen. That, that's what comes to mind that's because right. you know, as as we again, as we go through through uh, our Christian walk, uh, question is what we should do. That's right. When we should do that, uh, uh, we should do it every day. Right. When someone brings you something, and and and, and um, yes, when it when it's involving your soul, mm -hmm. when it's involving your belief, we don't want to be like Diana. Diana, we don't want to just walk with the crowd because the crowd is walking. We need to stop and ask questions. Those people never asked why those people were shouting Diana. Diana. That's right. And they didn't know what she stood for. That's almost like, and I'm not telling anybody how to vote or whatever, but I'm just bringing this up as an example. Mm -hmm. That's like uh, Clinton and, and Trump now. Mm -hmm. Half the people that's going to the voting poll don't know why they're going to the voting poll. Mm -hmm. They're just going to be screaming, I'm for, tri I'm for Trump, I'm for Clinton. Mm -hmm. But you're not asking why. Mm -hmm. Why? And I speak you're of half right. the people because the majority of the people are, uh, are uh, of poor uh, poor. Uh, nature and what have you are, are low and, and not being taught and what have you mm -hmm. and that's what it is with the, the church mm -hmm. and I'm only using it as a metaphor I'm not saying that right it's, amen that's what it is we come every Sunday we sit here we listen to the preachers preach we listen to the Bible cl uh, class teachers teach and we never we absorb but we never ask the questions as to why mm 
Yes. What, you know, why are we doing this? You know, uh, how often do we go back to why we do the Lord's mm -hmm. Supper? You know, how often do we go back to ask well, why we don't have ladies standing in the pulpit? Mm -hmm. How often do we go back and ask, well, well, uh, uh, why we keep saying just the brothers are in charge? Mm -hmm. You know, every now and then those questions need to be thrown out there and asked and, and repetitively, re repetitively, repetitively repeated over and over. This is why. Right. Because Christ said it's not supposed to be. That's because right. the word said it's not supposed to be. That's you know, right. because we can be like the Dianas mm -hmm. and, and and we can keep screaming Church of Christ, Church of Christ. Because that's what we are doing. We're screaming Church of Christ. But why? Because we're absorbing what the world doing mm -hmm. and we're doing what the world doing. But yet as he stated so eloquently as, uh, as far as we're putting a stamp because we, the Church of Christ, we are God's people. Mm -hmm. And if we say it can be done, okay, it can be done. Mm -hmm. But if we don't do it, then we're going we're gonna to mock all of you all for doing it. Mm -hmm. But then if we find that there's an, oh, we, I think we can get away with this here. We're going to do this. So since we can do it, like he said, we're going to tell them, okay, now the Church of Christ is doing it. So mm -hmm. it's okay for y'all to do. Mm -hmm. It's okay for you all to stand up and clap your hands and sing and rock and, and do all the things that you do that you, you, you know, mm -hmm. that you say make you feel good. Mm -hmm. It's okay because now we've in invited it into our services to give to God. So let the world do it because it's okay to do now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we ought to be careful when we do stand up for what we think is right. Check out why we think it's right. right. Ask those questions because if we don't, we're going to be just like those people in, in, in that setting with Diana. Mm -hmm. Shouting for something we don't know why we're shouting for. Right. Working in God's vineyard and don't know why we're working there without going to find out this is what the Lord says to do. Mm -hmm. Bringing things in God's vineyard that's not supposed to be in there, but yet we're going to go with it because the church is doing it. The yes. church, the church is doing it. So we ought to be careful because you know what? The bottom line is it's going to cost us our soul. It will. It's going to cost us our soul because if we're following a man because a man says it's right, mm -hmm. God puts you in charge of his, his, his word to teach it, to live it, to apply it. And that's all he did. As far as you telling this man that he needs to wash a car or he needs to sell a, he's going to get you for it. And he's going to get the person that's, that decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to do that too. Because I think that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Search God's word. Search it daily. Search do as the Bereans. Right. Search it daily to find out what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Well said. Look at it if you would. This is good. Thank you, Sister Paul. Look at Acts 19. Uh, I want to show you something uh, concerning, because that's where we were headed to. Uh, we got a few more minutes. Diana. Now, I want to pull out a word here to show that there was an assembly call. And I want you to look at verse 32. Some therefore cried one thing, Acts 19.32. Some one another, as Sister Paul mentioned, for the assembly. And I want you to look at that word, assembly, okay, uh, was confused. So they're confused. This particular uh, group. And it says, And the more part knew not wherefore they will come together. Look at verse 33. And they drew out Alexander of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defenses of the people. When they knew he was a Jew, all one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the feet. So now, they know this guy. Wait a minute. Now, this guy is a Jew. We don't like him either. Now, we don't like the people, Paul, who are Christians. But they're like Jews because they know both of these groups speak against us and our worship of this great goddess, Diana. But I want to share something with you about this particular word, assembly. I want you to know that that is the word ecclesia, which we use for the call that, synonymous with the word church. It simply means it's G1577. Now, I'm saying this to make a point. Uh, G1577. Okay, it's the same word used for church. But it's assembly here. Okay, because the translator has translated assembly. Because he knows this is not the Christians. It's a generalized group. There may be Christians who came to hear what was said. But it's a called our group, a community group. That has been called out. This word means a calling out that is concretely a popular meeting. Especially a religious congregation. 
Jewish synagogue or Christian. Community of members on earth or saints in heaven or both. It's a generalized word. If you call all the angels for us, it would be an assembly. So what are we saying? This is an ecclesia of the community. And Demetrius, these guys have a problem. And you find his name in verse 24 because he's saying Paul and them is messing us up. Because we know that Diana fell out of heaven, if you go back and read. Her statue. And that's how we make our money. And he's messing our money up. That's what he's saying. Okay. Now, this is not of God. This is of man. So when we were at the Congregation of North Wayside Church of Christ, when they called out Lee Brown, well, see, they told us to stay. They called us out. And we finished Lee, you tell us, you called us out. You called us out from our activities to stay to him. It doesn't matter if you're running, Sophronia, Thomas, Thomas, whatever her name, she was there. It doesn't matter if she's running or if she's coming to talk about the community. This is what the politician does. Well, I want to come and speak at y'all church and tell about the works that we're doing. We don't care about that. Call an assembly over here at uh, the, uh, this place downtown, the convention hall. We got one right here in Humble. We want to invite the mayor here to tell us what he's doing for the community because that's what the assembly hall is for. And that's a generalized thing. And in addition to that, we don't even have to announce no nonsense like that. And we, because we, you're still calling the church out. So if you do what you call them to your building, it doesn't matter if it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you're going to have them say something. It's irrelevant what day. You have called the church together. And we are called out for spiritual activity. Someone said we want to present your church with an insurance plan. Then call. Here's a list of numbers. You call them yourself. Because see what you're doing is you're, you're getting us involved. And remember what the word affairs. These things of life. Of course, the things of life are talked about voting. But you got brethren that will have somebody come to the church and say, we're going to call on a Thursday because it's not worship. And they're going to tell us how to vote. You know who does that? The voting committee, the people who are over that. If you don't know how to vote on a new machine, you need to go where they got the machine and ask them how to vote. Because that's not an affair fair that we even get entangled. Somebody said we want good leaders. There is no leader created by God that has ever stopped the saints from worshiping. Not even Pharaoh who was killing them left and right. You cannot stop a man from worshiping in his heart. It is no power on earth made by God of flesh that can stop spirituality because the spirit is strong in the flesh. So we don't need to know who running, what's their thoughts, or none of that nonsense. How the machine, new machine. I remember my brother did that when they said, you know, we call church together. He asked me about it. I said, he shouldn't have done that because I said, people don't even have to vote to go to heaven. I said, I said if I want to do that individually, that's my business. As a church unit, as a Christian perspective, there is no scripture in the 13th chapter which deals that very profoundly in Romans that tell me I got to vote. So I say, well, don't complain about it. And believe me, I won't. But if he's sinning, I'm going to show a preacher about you. I don't care who you are. White House, Green House, or whatever. If you do something sinful, I'm going to talk about you. And I'm ready to die. Because that's what God, John, killed. And that's what God's people are about. Nobody's scared to die. We go, man, we go to paradise. I'm not to worry about no debt. You're the one worried about that, you denominational people that teach false doctrine. The key is, is this, brethren. That was wrong we did over there. I said, and I'm talking about me. I don't care about who else. Else. Me. Because that is not what we're about. That's not what the church does. We, we're not involved with that. So, we, you know, we want to call all the churches together because we try to do something in the community. Man, we're not calling nobody. We want to get all the preachers together. I wouldn't go if you asked me. I don't care what you're doing in our community. You step outside of God's boundaries that he's placed within his kingdom, and I'll talk to God, and so will the church, and let's see how far you get. You'll be like Sennacher. You won't set your foot on the property that belongs to the Lord because the law will take care of you. you know, see, when you say that, they want to say, well, you threaten. See, and you know, when a person tells you stuff like that, when you threaten, say, no, but I'm telling you one thing. God going to keep his promise with you in your heart, in your spirit, while you're in your inner bedchamber. He will trouble you. So you better watch what you say to the saints. You know what the problem with saints is? We act like we're not saints. We act like God can't protect us, like we don't know what we're doing. There is nothing on this lousy little dirt planet, and God has cursed the whole thing that is of any value to God other than the souls of men. So, anything 
relevant to such things like that? Politics, community, whatever. As Dwayne pointed out, we have a boundary. Israel had a boundary. And all the holiness was in the land of Israel. And that's what the church is. We have a boundary. That's why you hear the Lord talk about boundary. So later plumb now. He's trying to send a message that is a line between light and dark. Individually, because I'm in the flesh, I'm a part of the community. And I support it fully. Spiritually, I have nothing to do with this place. And I have no authority to call the church to discuss anything about politics or who we should vote for or none of that nonsense or even if we should vote. It's a right. But I do have the right, and the scripture tells me to tell the saints, now you got to pay a tribute to whom it's due, which is your taxes. You get on a toll road, you got to pay the toll. Because it's due them, you're on that road. As the sister pointed out, Matthew 22, 21, give the Caesar what's his and give the God what is God's. And it doesn't matter if you call on a Thursday. Because all a brother's trying to do when he does that, he's a deceitful worker and he's trying to get in good with the city. And he's alive, he say, no. Nah. Because if that's the case, then all the churches of Christ are supposed to call the mayor. Or we ought to all gather and let him talk to all of them. And if that's not a text, then it's an empty work and it's a work of deceit. You can get a brother all day long, brothers and sisters. And that's what I'm saying. No, uh, there is no authority given to the elders, the deacons, the evangelists, or the whole congregation together of leadership. There's no authority given to no group of leaders or one individual leader or one individual group of leaders to make a decision concerning the souls of saints that will impact them spiritually, impact them spiritually, without first bringing it to the church. Acts 15. They had full right to send that letter because it's already a doctrine. But they let the church know we're sending this letter by these men and this is what the letter said. Because they have the authority by God that all things must be done before men. 1 Corinthians 16. And it must be done honest. And that's what everybody has to understand. And so we understand that perfectly well. There are any other thoughts? No one else has any thoughts? I don't know who has the mic right now. Uh, Brother Marcus, can you give us a prayer to dismiss us, please? God bless you. Thank you for the comments, saints. God bless you.